guys, I'm Laura Vitale and on this episode of Laura in the Kitchen I want to share with you my recipe for chicken and dumplings. Now this is an American classic that I've absolutely grown to love over the years and I think when done right it can be one of the most delicious, comforting, soothing dishes you can possibly have. Very, very similar flavor wise of a chicken pot pie. So if that floats your boat, then this is definitely the recipe for you. Let me take you over the ingredients so we can get started. You'll need some boneless, skinless chicken thighs. I'll talk about this in just a minute. Some chopped up onions, carrots and celery, poultry seasoning. I've got a glass of wine, some chicken stock, some flour, salt and pepper, some vegetable oil, and you will need a few additional ingredients um, and then we'll get going on the dumplings as well, but this is kind of the base. Now, for when I make chicken pot pie or when I make uh, chicken dumplings or chicken biscuits, I always, always use boneless, skinless chicken thighs and then I cut them to about bite-sized pieces. I just think it's a lot easier than having to cook a whole chicken and then peel, you know, pull it apart. And I think chicken thighs or dark meat in general, it's so undervalued, it's cheap, it's flavorful and it's something that you can let it cook for a long time and it gives you a lot, a lot of flavor to your dish. Now, I trim off most of the fat, but I do keep some on because it does add a lot of flavor. Now to this, I'm going to season it really well with some salt and pepper. Now what I also have is my Dutch oven with some vegetable oil coming up to temperature at about medium high heat because I want to cook the chicken and get a nice sear um, on it and a nice color. So I'm going to add some salt and pepper and some flour because the flour is going to help create that crust, which is important, and also helps thicken our stew. So anyways, if you are familiar with chicken and dumplings um, and you have a family recipe for it, I would absolutely love to hear what you do to, you know, what your family loves. I know a friend of mine who makes chicken and dumplings and she must only use to, uh, white meat because her husband doesn't eat dark meat chicken and he just finds it not appetizing. Um, so I love hearing kind of like what other people do with their family recipes. And I think that's what makes food and recipe sharing in general so, so fun. I'm just gonna test my oil. Eh, just about there. I'm gonna do this in two batches because I don't wanna overcrowd the pan and then I'll end up steaming my chicken rather than getting a nice good crust on it. So I'm just going to cook this up, let it get nice dark brown, crispy on all sides. I'll do the second batch, take it out, and I'll show you what it looks like when it's done. Taking my second batch of chicken out, so crispy. I love the smell of sizzling chicken and getting all crispy. Mm. Okay, awesome. So in the same pot with the same drippings, I'm just going to add my chopped up veggies, give it a good stir, see if you're going to need to add any more oil. Mine's looking a little teeny, teeny bit dry. Let me grab my little bottle. This is just vegetable oil because I, if you were to use olive oil to sizzle up that chicken and get it really nice and crispy, the olive oil would burn. Trust me, I've made that mistake. I wish I could say just once or twice, but I've made that mistake a lot. So I've learned my lesson. I'm gonna season my veggies, which is a little bit of salt and pepper, because remember that seasoning every layer of your dish really makes a big difference. And now I'm just gonna let my veggies cook for about six to seven minutes, or until they've cooked down a bit. And I'll show you what they look like when they're done. They look perfect. Smells unbelievable, I, I mean, really. Nothing is really better than sizzling like onions and oh, anyways, makes me probably a little too happy, but that's okay. I put my chicken back in. I'm going to add in my poultry seasoning. Poultry seasoning is absolutely fantastic and some people uh, only use it around fall and winter. I use it all year long because I absolutely love it and it's just a seasoning blend that goes perfect with um, with poultry. Now you can make your own, it's really just dried herbs and you can look up online, there's a lot of different variations with it, but you could do like rosemary and thyme and dried parsley, just any herb that goes really well with poultry. Chicken back in. Now you can add chicken stock, which is what I'm going to do, except I currently, I should say, kind of obsessed with this stuff right here, which is really like just really concentrated uh, chicken base and you use 
a teaspoon for every cup. So I'm just going to add a couple of really good dollops of that. It'll give me plenty of flavor. I've really just been liking it because it eliminates me from having to have a ton of different uh, stock on hand. Now I'm going to add just a little bit of wine. I'm adding it now. I'm not adding it. Um, I didn't add it any earlier, but that's fine. I'm going to bring this up to a boil, partially cover it, and let it simmer for about 45 minutes. And I'll show you what it looks like once it's there. Very, very easy peasy. This looks amazing. It's been cooking for about 40 minutes, and it's exactly how I want it. The chicken's really nice and tender. Now, at this point, make sure you taste it for seasoning. I've already adjusted mine. Now, it does look a little bit on the liquid side, but that's okay, because that's what the dumplings are for. They're going to really thicken this up beautifully. Now, I'm going to add in some frozen peas, along with some heavy cream, which is really what I do on my uh, chicken pot pie anyway. So. This is kind of the same path. Now what I'm going to do is let that cook, and in the meantime, we're going to make our dumplings. Now what I have here is all-purpose flour, baking powder, salt, chopped up parsley, chopped up chives. That's a little bit too big, but a little. And then I've got some cracked black pepper. Now to this, I'm going to add a mixture of heavy cream and whole milk. I've got a little bit of both. And then we're going to add in some melted butter, which I've got right over here. And I'm just going to take my spatula and I'm going to mix everything together. Now, if this looks like it's on the lumpy side, that's okay because that is how it's supposed to look. So just take your time and just mix this all together. They look perfect. I'm going to just turn this down. This has come up to a boil. I'm going to turn that down. And I'm going to use a one tablespoon measure ice cream scoop. Just makes them all perfect. And I'm just going to scoop right on top of those delightful juices. Try to work as fast as you can so they kind of all cook and plump up at the same time. And that's it. You can also just use two, you know, two spoons and you know, that's it. Yeah, it's job done. That easy. Last one, right on the very top. I just turned my heat back up to about medium, between medium and medium high. It doesn't need to be at medium high and you don't want it to be at medium, somewhere in between. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to co cover this partially, still leaving a little bit of, of room here for the steam to escape. And I'm going to let this cook for 15 minutes and then turn the heat off, let it sit there for about five minutes and we are ready to dig in. Oh, goodness gracious, how good does that look? Now the dumplings cooked for about 15 minutes and then I turned this off, covered it, uh, covered it, let it sit there for about five minutes and we are ready to dig in. Admittedly, this might not look picture perfect. It might not look like something that it's on the front of a magazine, but it is one of the most delicious and comforting things in the entire world. I mean, really. Look at those perfect dumplings. Oh, the chicken, that gravy. I love it. All. It all has my name. It has my name written all over it. Let's just go into the dumpling first. I want to show you how lovely and fluffy they look. Let's try that. I can really, really smell the poultry seasoning. Mmm. Mmm. They melt in your mouth. They have thickened up this soupy gravy, whatever you want to call it, so perfectly. It's really, there's really no words. It's an amazing comfort food, perfect for this time of year. Not that the weather is really starting to finally cool down. I can't imagine anything cozier than a bowl of this, maybe a baguette and a green salad, possibly an apple pie, and you've got like the perfect fall Sunday dinner. I hope you enjoyed spending time with me. Head on all over to laurainakitchen.com to get this recipe and also a great apple pie recipe or any recipe you might be interested in. And as always, I will see you next time. Bye-bye.